Uh, hello, I'm Jason Powell, and on behalf of Sabre Astronautics, I'd like to welcome you to a talk on operationally responsive space. It's a project which we believe is going to be the next generation in satellite control. Uh, a, a bit about me, I was an uh, Army Space Support Team leader out of Colorado Springs, and I finished my tour of duty and decided to come to Australia for a master's, ended up with a PhD and a wife, and uh, here I am. So uh, since I, you know, I've joined your society, so, so for me that, that means if I'm, if I'm going to do something, it's, it's going to have a benefit to Australia as well as have uh, some type of industry uh, level contribution as well. So we formed Sabre Astronautics a few years ago. We're, we're a small uh, startup company, but we're packing a lot of punch as far as our interpersonal capability. So we have uh, space engineers who worked on the Hubble Space Telescope and the International Space Station. Uh, we have PhD level graduates from the University of Sydney in robotics. And we have decorated officers from Army and Air Force Space Command. And uh, what, what a lot of people who start space companies try and do, they're trying to reduce the barrier to entry for, for space. Right? They're trying to reduce the cost of satellites or maybe some try and reduce the cost of launch. For us, we, they, what a lot of people don't realize is that the cost of operations is actually up to a third uh, the cost of your, of your total mission. So we decided to, to focus based on our, our skill set on ground station operations. Australia, we don't have a, a lot of satellites indigenous to us, but that's not important. We are great real estate for space. Our target market if you look at it, mostly US, some Europe, uh, if they want to talk to their satellite, and by the way, about 1,200 new launches happening over the next decade, right? if they want to talk to their satellite, they have to talk within this part of the world. So that means ground station in Russia, China, Indonesia. For the Americans, Australia is very, very valuable real estate for the Europeans as well. Okay, And I bet a lot of people here didn't realize that Australia recently started a new space program by Kevin Rudd, threw in $40 million into, into a startup space program. Uh, I recommend you check out space.gov.au if you want to learn a little bit more about it, but we're competing for a, a part of that, 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 the chunk of that pot. Okay, uh, and this is, uh, within operational response to space, it's actually quite a big project with a lot of partners, but this is our part called the Predictive Interactive Ground Station Interface. Now, I know it's a busy slide. I, I wanted to show you what our competitors uh, and what really the industry standard is. What you get is a whole bunch of words on the screen, and you have to hire uh, some very smart people to sit down and look at the screen. And what they're looking for, it's kind of like the matrix. You're trying to, to see if one of those words turn red. If it turns red, it means you have a defect on the satellite that needs to be managed. Right? That means that you're hiring a lot of people to do a job, uh, which if you had some better graphic user, user interfaces, you could save millions of dollars on. And it also means if there's a defect on the satellite, uh, there's this whole process to mitigate that defect. Right? So if you had artificial intelligence uh, that, that can tell you some causal interaction, then you could reduce the cost to your actual downstream customers in order of millions of dollars. Right? So that's what we're doing. We're adding 3D graphic user interfaces, and we're adding automation to the back end for the ground station control. Right? Uh, that is really the, what I just described as the holy grail of space operations, and I've glossed over the difficulty of the problem. Uh, what we did is we partnered up, right? Uh, we have two top universities in Australia, ANU and Sydney Uni. We've got a company in Greece that handles data distribution for satellites uh, across Europe and uh, Eastern Europe. And uh, we have two labs from CSIRO, one of which is actually bringing uh, health sensors from NASA Dryden Research Center. Last but Probably most important out, out of the group is MIT Space Systems Labs. They're, they're one of the top space engineering labs in the world, arguably. And uh, they're important because they're bringing on board um, an actual live satellite that's going to be launched using our ground station. Right? So we're going to be working together on it. So as a, as a group, we're competing for $3.6 million in funding, and we're all contributing $3.6 million in in-kind contribution. Now, the important date up here is 2013. That's the launch date for the MIT uh, product. Uh, we plan on selling uh, the, the, the Piggy license at 1.2 million. Comes with six months of on-site developer support. Uh, it's a high-end product. It also means we're going to be cash flow positive at the very first sale. Um, and we're looking at about, about seven sales per year, so approximately just under $10 million uh, per year after, after 2013. Okay, so. In conclusion, uh, we've got a great team. We've got a great project which can have a real industry impact. And for Australia, this is a real important opportunity 
to really capture a part of a multi-billion dollar market that we haven't had before. Thank, Thank you, you very much, guys.